all right guys now is the time that we move on to our next project and this project is going to be a blog uh, this is because most of you guys wanted me to create a blog so i will create a blog so in order to create a new django project what i'll do is i'll simply open django documentation so i'll say django tutorial and this is the django documentation so as you can see i have opened this page and to be very honest, I remember all the commands at this point, but maybe in the future, say one year down the line, I might not remember all the commands. So what I do is I strongly recommend this website. You open this web page and copy this command Django admin start project my site or whatever the name of the site, uh, whatever the name of your site is. So what I'll do is I'll simply right click and I'll shift right link and open partial window here. If you are on Ubuntu or Mac OS or some other operating system, you might want to open terminal in your operating system. And what I'll do is I'll simply paste this Django admin start project my site. In my case, what I'll do is I'll say my blog. So in my case, the name of my website is going to be my blog. Okay. And I'll give it an interesting name. So a name that comes to my mind at this point is mountain mountain coders so this is a name that i'm choosing randomly feel free to choose your name and i'll press enter key and this will create a project uh, a jenga project for me uh, the name of the project is mountain coders okay and this blog is going to contain some sort of blog post i should be having an admin panel where I can add a lot of blog posts. So this is the project that I created. So what I'll do now is I'll open this particular folder in VS code. So I'll right click and click open with code. As you can see this uh, mountain coders folder has been opened at this point. And what I'll do now is I'll click on terminal and new terminal and I'll have my terminal over here. So I can create a lot of apps inside this particular folder. I've already discussed about the difference between app and a project and you should be knowing a lot about apps and projects and what the difference between two is at this point if you have watched this playlist if you haven't already accessed this playlist i want you guys to access this playlist click here to bookmark it and click here to save it so that you can make this playlist yours and you can get the best out of this playlist so what i'll do now is i'll open the django documentation and i'll find the command to create a new app so our project on itself cannot have views so what we need to do is we need to create some apps in order to give it a view in order to have some pages and uh, in order to make our block functional okay so what i'll do is i'll copy uh, this python manage.py start app polls from here and i'll paste it here and in order to make a blog what i'll do is i'll call my app as blog so i want a blog folder here so I'll say, okay, Python managed.py started blog. So mountain coders is a project and blog is an app. What I'll do at this point is I'll come to urls.py of mountain coders and I'll select a Python interpreter here. If you haven't already selected, it shows me this sort of error all the time uh, because I have multiple versions of Python installed. Maybe you'll not see this error. So what I'll do is uh, I'll create a new URL. I'll say, okay, do one thing. Whenever somebody comes with a blank URL pattern, you do one thing, you redirect that person to urls.py of blog. So it will send the request to urls.py of blog. So what I'll do is I'll simply copy this one and I'll paste it here. So everything has already been done for me. They have already given me all the commands and I can easily copy paste all these commands. So they really make it very easy for a person to create a blog and create pages like this. So what I'll do is I'll import include as well. So I'll say django.urls import path and include because I'm using this include and I want to switch to blog.urls. Now, fortunately, this blog and this blog is same for me. But if you are calling your app with some other name, you might want to write the name of your app over here and do not write blog always. Blog is not a convention. I hope it is very clear. This is not blog. This is the name of this app. Whatever the name of your app is will be coming here. Okay. Now what will happen is uh, I'll change this one. So whenever somebody comes with some URL pattern, if I say, take me to uh, say mountain slash home, 
what this URL pattern will do is it will say, okay, you are saying home. It doesn't match this one. This is blank. So what I'll do is I'll send your request to blogs urls.py. Now we'll come to blogs urls.py, which is definitely not present at this point. So I'll create a new file called urls.py inside my blog. Okay. And what I'll do now is I'll copy this one and I'll paste it here and I'll remove everything from here. And what I'll do is I'll say, okay, uh, if something matches home, you do one thing, you redirect that person and show him the view. What I mean by this is if the string which matches is nothing, that means somebody has visited mountaincoders.com. You might want him to see home function from views.py. So what I'll do is I'll come to my views.py and I'll say def home request and I'll simply say, okay, uh, I want to return. I'll simply uh, import this one HTTP response, HTTP response. This is home. Now this HTTP response is really very useful if you want to create some sort of skeleton. So what I'm doing at this point is I'm creating a skeleton for my Django app. So I've created this home function and also I have created this URL pattern wherein I'm saying that whenever somebody visits the homepage of my website, he should be redirected to views.home. In order to use this views, I need to import it. So I'll say from blog import views so it will go to this blog folder and it will import views from this blog i'll control s to save and i'll say python manage.py run server if you don't remember this command what you can do is you can always come here and you can copy this command from here and paste it so if you don't spend much time working with Django, you might forget all the commands. In that case, feel free to use this as a reference page and copy and paste the commands from here. So what I'll do now is I'll open this 127.0.0.1 and I'll press my control and click it. And as you can see, I'm seeing this, this is home here. So this is my home page. Now what I want is whenever somebody clicks on blog, he should be redirected to my blog home. So I also want to create another endpoint and the name of that endpoint should be blog. So I'll say views.blog and I'll say if somebody matches blog, then you need to take him to views.blog and I need to create this function as well. I don't have a blog function. So what I'll do is I'll create this blog function. I'll say def blog and this is blog. So if somebody comes to my website slash blog, he sees this is blog. I might also want to have a contact because if something goes wrong in my blog, I want people to contact me through this page. So I'll say, okay, if you want to contact me, you can simply use this slash contact endpoint and you can contact me and let me know whatever the problem in my blog is or whatever the problem you are facing or something else you want to tell me. So if I go to slash contact, you can see this page. This is basically this view. This is not a plain text. This is this view. And I'm saying that return HTTP response with this string as part of this view. So whenever somebody executes this contact view, he'll see this is contact on the screen. I might also render a template. I'm not doing that at this point, but I might do that and I will do that in the future. But at this point, I want to create bare minimum blog. I want to create my blog with bare minimum endpoints with zero design. And then as a part of my next step, I'll add the design to this blog. Okay. So what I'll do now is I'll create another endpoint and I'll call this endpoint as the most important endpoint of the blog. And it is the main page of the blog. So if I have some blog post inside my blog, let us say the title of my blog post is Django crash course. So what I want is whenever somebody visits my slash blog post slash Django tutorial, he should be shown the page containing the Django tutorial. Now this, is a part which we haven't yet discussed. So what I'll do is I'll create this endpoint and you'll understand everything. So I'll simply say blog post and it will take a parameter which is called slug and another one is this request. And what I'll do is I'll say 
return HTTP response and after HTTP response I'll say you are viewing and then I'll say slug and this will contain the slug it might be Django tutorial or C tutorial or whatever the slug of my blog post is now if you don't know what slug is I'll show you an example so we'll go to some blog over the internet and we'll look into the example of slug so as you can see that there is this blog and if I open this article from this blog and this article from this blog can you see this thing this is the slug story slash this dot html is the slug story slash this dot html is the slug and in some of the blogs what you'll see is the slug is some sort of a text so as you can see uh, let me open this uh, verge blog if I open one page from this verge and another from this verge you can see this is a slug this is what I'm talking about this is the slug so this is some sort of text which shows up in the URL and at the same time this uniquely corresponds to a post so you can uniquely define a post using this text so this is the slug so what I'll do is I'll pull this slug from the database and I'll pull the corresponding blog from the database and I'll populate a template. But that thing is something uh, which will be done in the future. At this point, I just want to have a function. I just want to have this slug and I want to render this slug inside this uh, as a string inside this HTTP response. So in order to do that, what I'll do is I'll say, OK, if somebody comes to blog post and slash some sort of string, and I'm calling that string slug you need to take him to views dot blog post okay and this is the views dot blog post and if I go to blog post slash say Django if I go to blog post slash Django it is saying got multiple values for argument slug let me see what the problem is so it's saying that blog post got multiple values for argument slug okay so I need to have this request first and slug later and now I should be able to view this so it's saying you are viewing Django if I say Django tutorials you can see you are viewing Django tutorials so what I'm basically doing is I'm parsing the URL entered by the user and this parameter after the blog post can be stored inside a variable called slug and I'll have this variable available inside my views so what I can do inside my views is I can have some sort of database queries which will execute during the runtime and find out whether there is some sort of post with this slug inside my mountain coders database or not now at this point this might sound really very confusing but bear with me this is going to be the page which will contain the blog post this is going to be the blog page this is going to be the informative page which will contain all the information about a particular blog post so what we'll do is inside a blog we'll add a lot of blog posts and whenever somebody wants to read a blog post he need to visit this view in order to read that particular blog post so so a slug will map to some sort of blog inside the database and i can dynamically extract that blog out using the slug so i'll have this slug and i can use this slug to dynamically query my database and extract out all the information corresponding to that slug and the blog post so if the slug is say let me have an example from this uh, theverge.com if the slug is facebook group recommendation update list moderators what i'll do is i'll go to my database i'll query my database for the slug and i'll fetch all this title this particular thing this text or the images and whatever is being shown up inside this page can be queried from the database and this template can be populated if you can see this page and compare it with this page you'll see that they have populated some sort of template so this is some sort of template being populated with different titles you can see the title here is different and the title here is different but the overall design remains the same so what they are doing is they are using some sort of template inheritance I'm just guessing it they are using some sort of template inheritance and they are populating only the parts which are variable in the template now this website might not be built using Django to be very honest but if this is built using Django then this is a variable 
this is a variable and all this is a variable we'll see how we'll structure a django blog with these concepts okay so what i'll do now is i'll simply leave this as is and in my upcoming videos i'll tell you how we can replace all these things with a template and how we'll create a model such that we can pull the content for a particular blog post from a database okay so at this point i want you guys to access this playlist if you haven't already and please show me some support on this course uh, so that i can upload the videos quickly and make sure to like this video guys thank you so much guys for watching this video and i will see you next time, next time.